So breaking news, Khabib's gym has been raided by the FSB security forces in Russia in response to what had happened during the terrorist attack that had happened in Dagestan, which left a Catholic priest or an Orthodox Christian priest uh, unalived based on getting his throat and a whole bunch of different synagogues getting blown up and things of that nature. So very tragic in that end, right? And obviously, one of the people involved was a supposed alleged member of Khabib's camp in which Khabib later proclaimed that he was no more than just a person that came to the gym that trained, that did his camps there, which, by the way, let me explain in mixed martial arts context, okay? A lot of guys train in different gyms. There's a difference between training at a gym and being an actual member of a particular team. Now, let's say, for example, I'll give you some experiences of mine in Team Alpha Male, okay? So, Uriah Faber, Chad Mendez... And you can go back to the days of TJ Dillashaw, Cody Garbrandt, uh, Joseph Benavidez. Uh, the list goes on and on. Now, Andre Feely, who, by the way, is fighting today at UFC 303, that's Team Alpha Male. Now, are there guys that have came to Sacramento to train at Team Alpha Male? Yeah, 100%. It doesn't mean that they are members of Team Alpha Male. This is the same story that we are dealing with with this particular guy that has supposedly done horrific things in the name of whatever cause that he's trying to, I guess, uh, do it under, right? But Khabib even came out and said, this is something that is condemnable, right? Like, why would I not condemn this? Is it even a question to condemn these horrific actions? And he goes on to explain that he was a guy that just came and trained a couple of times in that camp. He was a 2-1-0 fighter, by the way, right? And the Russians had decided to go and raid him now. Would the Russians do this if they were... I'm sorry, would the America do this if it was Khabib uh, in uh, America having a gym here and things of that nature? My answer is no. Look, we have a different set of laws here that they do in Russia... I'm going to put it plain and simple. They operate out of emotions, and here we operate out of objectivity, evidence, and burden of proof. None of that matters in Russia. You see, all they know is that, hey, you know what? Khabib, this guy, they known each other, but at what extent did they really know each other? Just like what I had just mentioned to you about the uh, Team Alpha Male uh, situation, or most MMA gyms, uh, around the country most people train in different gyms it doesn't mean that they are members there there's guys that are not members of Dr greg jackson's camp that will literally go there and train for maybe a couple of weeks or something like that uh george st pierre i don't think he's a full-pledged member of greg jackson's camp but he has done camps there there are people that go out and train with Faraz Zahabi up in Montreal, but it doesn't mean that they are part of the TriStar gym, nor will Faraz Zahabi walk them out to their fight. This is the same situation. This guy has never been cornered by Khabib in the 2-0 fight, fights that he has. Has Khabib, Islam, or any of the Team Eagle guys that are recognizable to the public ever walk this guy out and the answer is no so why is it that the russians are raiding khabib well this is a reason why you're here is for me to discuss this obviously one he's dagestani if you don't know what that means in russia that's literally being black in america because obviously there was a time where the muslims of russia had a conflict with mainland russia okay and a lot of that Hatred stems from those particular historical events that took place with their conflict going on from the 1800s. You can go back to the 1600s and so on and so forth, right? There's a vast history of Muslim and Christian conflict within that region. And obviously, over the years, when Khabib became a big superstar in Russia, 
it didn't really matter as much, at least not in the mainstream level to where you would see Putin invite Khabib just after Khabib had defeated Conor McGregor. And the same thing with Islam Makhachev, the same thing every time Khabib won a UFC title fight. He would come back after the Dustin Poirier fight, after the, uh, what was that, the Justin Gaethje fight. So it kind of showed, you know what, there's Russian unity amongst Muslims and Christians, right? And that's not fake. Let's, not, let's be honest about this. Nothing about that is fake, okay? Because Abdul Manap has trained guys that are not Muslim. He's trained with different Russians. He's trained with different nationalities. So they're not these guys that are, let's say, uh, Muslim only and don't mess with anybody else. Obviously, Khabib comes out here in the United States. He trains in Northern California. He trains in San Jose. He uh, trains different fighters from America. He helps Bilal Muhammad, who is American. Yes, he's Muslim, but he's American, even though he's American with a Sunni Muslim background, just like Khabib. Nonetheless, understand this. I don't think that it was called for with the reasons that the Russians had to go out and raid Khabib. But at the same time, I hope that they do find out that, hey, there is nothing going on. This man is a sportsman. He's never involved himself in politics in any kind of way. Other than the fact that Islam Makhachev in the recent times has called out to people for, let's say, uh, being aware of what's going on in Palestine. Right? That's the most political that that team has ever gotten. And really, on a mainstream level, there's really nothing outrageous or radical about that. Even myself, I'll tell you, as neutral, not neutral, I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm neutral on the subject, but I will say I understand if you are an Israeli soldier and let's say your family gets kidnapped, captured, bombed, or things of that nature, and you want to join the IDF to counter that. On the other side, I could understand if you're a wannabe Hamas member, first you're a wannabe Hamas member, or not even thinking about Hamas at all, then all of a sudden a bomb drops down in your home, kills your entire family, and now you want to go do something about it. Now here comes these guys, Hamas, who will offer that to you, and this is the reason why you are where you're at in that hypothetical situation, right? So I understand both sides. However, the fact that I will go out and say, yeah, you know what? Uh, care for the Palestinians, uh, aid the Palestinians in their hardships and this and that. That alone, you would be surprised how many people get at me, whether online or even, let's be honest, right? Online personalities, that have uh, serious issues with me taking that particular side, right? Or not even taking a particular side, because let's be honest, unless you're actually in that war, you're not taking any sides. Sure, you can favor one side or the other, but the reality is you're not really doing anything, right? You're just sitting in the sideline. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not encouraging or telling anybody to go one way or the other. I'm just saying that that's really what it is. So for Khabib, when you say that he's sort of in that same light, yes, is there conflict in Russia amongst Muslims and Christians? You have Ramzan Kadyrov, who is the leader of Chechnya, right? He was appointed by Vladimir Putin, his father, Akhmat, uh, Kad um, Akhmat Kad Kadyrov, the father of Ramzan Kadyrov. Him and Ramzan Kadyrov were both former jihadist revolutionaries who became state-sponsored uh, rebels or state-sponsored uh, rogue uh, militants and what have you, right? So in other words, Putin gave them a position and now they control Chechnya, which that in and of itself is a conflict, an inner conflict amongst the Chechnyans and the Dagestanis. But they have to listen to Ramzan Kadyrov. They have to be on his side. They have to support him because just like anywhere else in the world, if you don't do that, you know, bad things happen to you, right? So 
In other words, what I'm trying to say is that Khabib has been neutral this whole entire time. Hasn't had any uh, particular quarrels with the Russian government, other than, of course, the taxes that uh, he was charged with or something. That he, I don't know the full details of it, but obviously, from what we know within public information, it's really him not paying $3 million worth of taxes. It's no different than the Wesley Snipes situation or any Hollywood or athlete that believes they don't have to pay taxes or this and that or somehow just miss out on doing it for whatever reason because they were too busy doing other things. A whole multitude of reasons, right? Now, I think to myself, does Khabib have a sense of quarrel against the Russian government for doing that? Sure. But there's levels to quarrelsome with governments, right? It doesn't mean that you want to do extreme things. And once again, take a look at the live stream that I did regarding this particular subject with uh, Khabib. No, I'm sorry. It wasn't a live stream, actually. It was uh, a video that I did regarding this uh, particular topic. So I had to get back here and do this video again because apparently the Russians did raid his gym. Now let's get on to the subject of Conor McGregor. He goes and says, I was right all along. And weirdly enough, Tommy Robinson shares the tweet of Conor McGregor. And I've mentioned in this particular channel before, I have a video of Tommy Robinson and Conor McGregor, where Conor McGregor was talking about how he wanted to uh, run for public office in Ireland. And the response that he had towards the migrant crisis going on, where they had some... Uh, illegal immigrants stabbing local Irish uh, people and he wanted to say something about it and so obviously it became a Tommy Robinson situation for those of you that don't know who Tommy Robinson is he is an anti-Islamic activist in England a former or current uh, soccer hooligan and uh, yeah he's within that mix of that political sphere of things so I urge you to check out that video there's a lot that goes into that video that sort of relates to what is going on in today's time frame and what's happening. But anyways, Conor McGregor is using this as a low-hanging fruit to try and antagonize Khabib. He's got after Ali Abdelaziz for supposedly being on a plane during 9-11 and for whatever reason, I don't know what he's trying to incite with that. I don't know what he's trying to imply with that. I don't know if he's trying to say that Ali Abdelaziz was one of the hijackers, or if Ali Abdelaziz was involved in 9-11, which is crazy enough to say. But you have to understand and read between the lines. Just because Conor McGregor says it, it doesn't mean that it's true. Everybody's having this hashtag saying, Conor was right, Conor was correct. Well, what exactly was he correct about? That somebody on his team committed an act of terrorism? Look, you got to understand, there's six degrees of separation that we have as human beings, meaning that who I know, you may know at a mutual level based on the mutual friends that they have. If you understand what I mean by saying that, and if you don't, just rewind back 20 seconds from this uh, particular video and analyze what I just said. Six degrees of separation. In other words, everybody knows everybody. You're going to run across people that are some of the worst human beings in the world and you don't even know it. You've ran across some of the worst people in your family, in your workplace, and even just passing by at the subway or some public transit or just being in traffic in the middle of LA or in the middle of Sacramento or whatever, you run across some of the worst people in the world. And some of them you'll actually interact with and some of them you won't. And then some of them will actually be in your gym and you won't even know it. You won't even know what they're about. You ask anybody that is an expert in terrorism, one thing that they will tell you is that you just don't know when something is going to clack off, right? You don't know when something is going to go down. You just don't know if somebody has an intent to harm you in any kind of way until they actually do. And once again, just like in the last video, I've said there's really nothing that you can solve out of this. I try to solve every issue in every video. I try to give a detailed breakdown. I try to 
give, let's say, a ribbon wrapped into this story as a present to you, right? And not only that, with conclusions. Sometimes there's just not any conclusions to anything. Sometimes some things are just ongoing. But I have a feeling this particular story won't be the end of it. Why? Because the Russians don't operate like America in terms of due process. So in other words, when they go out and investigate, when they go out and do raids, it's not done out of reason or evidence or anything other than historical significance, which by the way, you could see that in Vladimir Putin in the way that he talks about wars, in the way that he talks about certain regions and taking it over and bringing it back to the old glory of Russia. So yes, this is the type of terms that they talk under. Not the terms of what is going on right now or what is happening in the current moment of time, but rather their own feelings and their own subjective opinions rather than objective facts. So that is all that I can offer you right now. Don't forget to like and subscribe.